uh, acoprim 5GG uh, positive neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorders or NMOSD uh, is a clinical entity recognized recently and uh, uh, it is clinically characterized by severe optic neuritis, uh, longitudinally extensive transverse myelitis and in some cases uh, some brain syndrome. Uh, and the aquaporin 5GG is a, a disease-specific autoantibody. And uh, after the discovery of this autoantibody, our understanding of the, the clinical manifestations, MRI findings, and laboratory findings have made us significant progress. And based on those uh, uh, scientific findings, uh, the diagnostic criteria of the disease was revised, and the most recent version was published in 2015. And uh, uh, for the first time, the term uh, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorders was proposed for the entire clinical entity. As I mentioned, uh, optic neuritis and myelitis uh, are um, main symptoms, but after the discovery of this autoantibody, uh, we, we know that some patients develop uh, brain syndrome. So uh, neuromyelitis optica alone uh, is not sufficient to uh, show the entire clinical entity. That's why the term NMO spectrum disorder was proposed. And in 2015 criteria, the disease was stratified based on the uh, serostatus of acoprin 5GG, uh, namely acoprin 5GG positive NMOSD and seronegative NMOSD. In uh, acoprin 5GG positive NMOSD, so uh, acoprin 5GG should be reliably positive. And then you need only one core clinical characteristic, uh, namely optic neuritis or acute myelitis or brain syndrome. Uh, NMO, as I said, means uh, optic neuritis and myelitis. And, but in this uh, new diagnostic criteria, as long as the patient is positive for acroprim 5GG, you need only one core clinical characteristic. So it can facilitate earlier diagnosis which is critically important to start treatment early in the course of the disease uh, in order to improve the long-term uh, prognosis of the disease. Uh, on the other hand, uh, seronegative NMOSD is a bit of a problem because uh, probably uh, seronegative NMOSD is heterogeneous in nature. So a variety of disorders may be diagnosed with seronegative NMSD. For example, uh, uh, myelin oligodendrocytic glycoprotein or MOG antibody uh, has been detected in some patients with seronegative NMSD. Although uh, the, the entire clinical spectrum of MOG antibody associated disease is uh, much wider than just uh, NMO. But uh, uh, MOG positive patients may develop the clinical phenotype of NMO. Uh, but uh, again, uh, it seems to be heterogeneous in nature, and more research uh, will be needed to clarify this uh, unique uh, type of disease. Uh, that's my understanding about the diagnostic criteria. And as for uh, the treatment, uh, probably the, the biggest topic in the treatment of this disease, especially the acoprin 5GG positive NMOSD, uh, was uh, the publication of the first ever randomized controlled trials of three monoclonal antibodies in the disease. Uh, those monoclonal antibodies uh, are uh, anti complement C5 monoclonal eculizumab, anti interleukin 6 receptor monoclonal satralizumab, and anti CD19 monoclonal inabilizumab. And the three uh, randomized controlled trials were published in major journals two in New England Journal of Medicine and one in Lancet in 2019, two years ago. Very remarkably, uh, the risk reduction of relapse by these monoclonal antibodies in comparison with placebo were uh, around 80% to over 90%. Very remarkable, uh, highly effective drugs. And on the other hand, the safety profiles were generally favorable. 
So I believe that uh, these monoclonal antibodies will change the therapeutic landscape of NMOST uh, in the near future. But again, uh, the therapeutic efficacy uh, were proven in aquaporin 5 gg positive disease. They were not shown to be effective in seronegative disease. So the seronegative NMOST, especially its treatment, will be the next challenge and uh, will be the next research front.